think about it. Welcome, I'm Jane Houston-Jones from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. What's up for September? A total eclipse of the harvest moon. On the evening of September 27th, observers in North and South America will see a long total lunar eclipse lasting 72 minutes. This eclipse is also visible in Europe and Africa. It's the night of the harvest moon the full moon closest to the September equinox. Equinox is derived from the Latin for equal night, so day and night on the 27th will be roughly of equal length, and the sun will rise exactly in the east and set exactly in the west. Sometimes the full moon is called the supermoon, a term coined just a few years ago. A supermoon is a new or full moon which occurs when the moon is at or near its closest approach to Earth in a given orbit. There are four to six supermoons every year on average, so they're not unusual. You won't really be able to see the difference between this full moon and any other one with your eyes. It'll only be about 7% larger. The moon is 221,000 miles from Earth this month, as opposed to the average distance of 239,000 miles. The partial lunar eclipse begins at 9.07 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. It will last a little more than an hour, and observers can watch as, crater by crater, the moon is engulfed in Earth's shadow. West Coast viewers take note. When the eclipse begins, the moon won't have risen yet for you. The total eclipse begins at 10.11 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and also lasts for more than an hour, ending at 11.23 p.m. The moon's reddish color you'll see is caused by sunlight refracting through Earth's atmosphere on its way to light the moon's surface. This month, the moon skims Earth's shadow, just as it did in the April lunar eclipse. In April, the North Pole appeared a bit brighter during totality. This time, the Southern Pole will appear a bit brighter, a bit like a partial eclipse. Then it's the whole show in reverse order, ending at 12.27 a.m. on the East Coast and 9.27 p.m. on the West Coast. Stargazers and fans of eerie, prophetic-like omens will be in for a treat early Tuesday morning when a total lunar eclipse will occur, turning the full moon red. Also called blood moons, total lunar eclipses happen about twice a year when the moon passes directly behind the Earth into its shadow or umbra. What's up with the creepy red glow that gives the lunar event its nickname? Well, the red color is actually not unlike a sunset, but from the moon's perspective. NASA describes it as seeing every sunrise and every sunset in the world, all of them, all at once. And that red glow from behind the Earth gets projected onto the moon. This total lunar eclipse will be the first in a series of four appearing every six months, a phenomenon called a tetrad, something not particularly rare for this century, according to NASA eclipse expert Fred Espinak. While a total lunar eclipse is an interesting sight for stargazing hobbyists, for others, the oncoming blood moon and tetrad bring something else, tidings of doom. CTV News writes that conspiracy websites draw parallels between lunar eclipses and historical events, like the fall of Constantinople and the founding of the State of Israel, and that the last blood moon occurred when the Red Sox won the World Series in 2004. But perhaps the biggest proponent for any conspiracy concerning the upcoming blood moons is Pastor John Hagee, who released a book titled Four Blood Moons, Something is About to Change in 2013. With all four blood moons being viewable from the U.S., New York Daily News notes Hagee claims that the four blood moons that will soon appear in the skies over America are evidence of a future world-shaking event. In an interview with Fox News, Hagee emphasized the significance that each blood moon will occur during a Jewish holiday as well. To have a blood moon and then for those blood moons to be on this exact date is something that just is uh, beyond coincidental. As noted by Think Progress, Hagee has caused some controversy before when in 2008 he suggested a connection between God's wrath towards a gay pride rally planned for New Orleans and Hurricane Katrina. 
The next three blood moons will be viewable this year on October 8th, followed by April 4th and September 28th next year. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. While most of the U.S. was asleep in the early morning hours of October 8, 2014, the second blood moon of an extraordinary series of lunar eclipses dominated the sky. We are now in the middle phase of this current tetrad, or four consecutive blood moons. According to NASA, over the past 5,000 years, on average, there's one total lunar eclipse every one and a half years. The current tetrad is rare. Number 62 in the past 2,000 years. And there will not be any more in the 21st century. But there is something at work here that makes this group of blood moons very rare. Only seven times since the time of Christ have all four blood moons of a tetrad all fallen on Jewish holy days. We are now in the middle of the eighth biblical tetrad and there will not be another biblical tetrad for almost 600 years. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. On the last biblical tetrad, which occurred from 1967 to 1968, Jerusalem was returned to Israel after the Six-Day War. Temple Mount was seized by Israel for the first time in 2,000 years. Just 18 years earlier, there was a biblical tetrad in 1949 to 1950, and this occurred during the time that Israel was miraculously declared a nation for the first time in 2,000 years. In addition, the Dead Sea Scrolls were also discovered. Before 1949, we have to go all the way back to 1493 to 1494 time frame to find another biblical tetrad. During this time, Columbus was credited with discovering America and the Jews were expelled from Sicily during the Spanish Inquisition. Many Jews and Christians believe that the blood moon prophecy is a sign of the end times. There are also people who believe that it is nothing more than a coincidental astronomical alignment. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. In this verse, where Jesus says that he is with us until the end of the world, the word world is translated from a Greek word, eon, which means age, and I believe this to be a translation error. Jesus said he would be with us until the end of the age, the age of Pisces, symbolized by two fish. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, shall they arise. Rather than this verse talking about bones coming out of the crypt, I believe that this refers to people awakening and remembering who they are. When asked by his disciples about preparing for the Passover, Jesus said the following, And he said unto them, Behold, when you are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. The symbol for Aquarius is a man carrying a pitcher of water. This current biblical tetrad, in my opinion, is part of a global shift in consciousness and will be accompanied by many earth-shaking changes. We are in the apocalypse which simply means the lifting of the veil. December 21st, 2012 
was not a single day event. It marked a time period of transition. A period in time also marked by the Hindus with the Kali Yuga, St. Malachi's Pope prophecy, the Hopi prophecy of the coming fifth world, the prophecy of Hermes Trismegistus, the Zoroastrian prophecies, the age of meeting ourselves again that the Incas talked of, and the Kala Chakra teachings of the Tibetan predicting the coming of the Golden Age. September 2015 is shaping up to be an incredible time during our transition as the final blood moon will actually be a super blood moon with the moon appearing 19% larger. As we continue barreling towards September 2015, we are in for the ride of a lifetime everyone as the transition from the age of believing to the age of knowing continues.